Hello, hello, beautiful souls and beautiful humans. Welcome to our new moon in Leo energy update and oracle reading. Now, I'm currently here with my lovely friend, Kate, who is one of the coaches from the Fearless, Loved Up and Limitless program. That's one of our coaching programs, our signature program. And she's also my, what would I say? We created the Rosie and Kate DVDs together, the prenatal and the postnatal DVDs, which you can still access through our store, the digital version, because who has DVDs these days? Anyway, I digress. We are here to work out exactly what is going on in between these two super full moons. And, you know, the energies have been so powerful this month. It's been off the scale, really. We've had Lionsgate. Before that, we had the 23 portal open up, which is the 23rd of July, the most powerful day of the year, which I explained why that was so important and made a whole video about it, which is all on my YouTube channel, Rosie Glow. Before that, we had the 777 portal. And we're really prepping now for next year's 888 portal, which is the Lionsgate on cosmic steroids. So. Everything that's happening at this current time is to align us with opening to receive the eternal flow of abundance that is always available to us. I call this eternal flow grace, and grace is, in my understanding, the power of revelation. It is those aha moments, light bulb moments, when suddenly you see something completely differently. You get a fresh perspective on an old problem or challenge or something you just haven't been able to fathom before. And by virtue of being able to see it differently, you're freed then of an old limiting belief, an old mindset that's kept you stuck in lack, kept you stuck in struggle, kept you stuck in trying to change things rather than allowing that change to occur. And this is the beauty of it, because once we empty our cup of the struggle stories, the limiting beliefs, the victim consciousness that keeps us looping again and again and again in places we don't really want to be, we have space for grace. We have space for shifts, shifts to occur, for the changes that are necessary that will allow us to get from where we are to where we want to be. And this is the point. You know, anyone who's in my sphere of influence is seeking to be a conscious co-creator. We've moved beyond law of attraction, moved beyond manifesting in terms of look what I can create just because I want to. And actually moving into the realms of what's for the highest good of all? What's for the win, win, win? How can we create the best for everyone? How can we take something we don't want and through the power of our imagination, transmute it into something we knew we do want and this for me is the creation of a whole new world a new earth paradigm which is paradise earth which is us living as hugely powerful and conscious co-creators as beings who are here to have fun creating in the physical realm and so we're learning everything we need to learn in order to be able to make that possible. Now, I had my birthday just a few days ago. It's the last day of the Lion's Gate, the 12th of August. And oh my, did I have the most fabulous weekend. It was really lovely. So thank you for everyone for your beautiful birthday wishes. It gave me time to really reflect on where I want to move forward at this time. And, you know, just to set the scene, I always go back to the last new moon and remind you that the last new moon was the new moon in Cancer. And it was about us outgrowing our old way of being, outgrowing the shell that we are used to living in. It was about shedding skin, shedding the limiting beliefs, shedding the ego identity, the sense of self that keeps us trapped in places we don't want to be. And this then led us to the full moon in Aquarius, where we were really working with the energy of being in the oneness of all that is, but also recognizing that we're an individual aspect of that oneness. Now, as we move into this new moon in Leo, which is today, we basically get to see the energy of I am, I feel, I speak, I see and I know. This is this total self-identity of owning, owning what we want for ourselves. And so the main thing that came up for me was about the I am statement. I am allowed to have what I want. Now, when you know anything about Leos, you know we're very loud generally. We have wallflower Leos too, but they're not really wallflowers. But we, we have this sense of being present. Everyone knows we're around. We light up a room. That's the energy of courage and confidence that comes with Leo. And the themes of courage and confidence are very, very important this, this particular new moon because it is the courage to move beyond those limiting beliefs that you inherited as a child around wanting. What were you told about wanting? Do you remember the statement, want, don't get? 
I remember that part of my conditioning around being allowed to need things, but not to want things. If I wanted things, I was greedy. If I wanted things, it was bad. And there's shame around wanting, which we're going to deal with in the next full moon at the end of this month in Pisces. But for now, what I wanted to open up for everybody was a conversation around wanting, what it means to want things, owning what we want, speaking up for what we want, not being passive aggressive or underhand or, you know, somehow kind of trying to get across what we want in a polite way, but being direct, owning it, speaking up in a way that doesn't make us obnoxious, doesn't make us um, rude, but actually allows us to say, you know what, what I would really, really want for myself right now is. Now, I believe that most people know more about what they don't want than what they do want. And I see this a lot in our coaching programs. And in fact, it's the first thing that we cover when we do come into the Fearless, Loved Up and Limitless programs to look at what we want from what we don't want. And we have a whole process around doing that and always challenging our intentions. Why do we want what we want? What is it about? Where's that want coming from? Is it a lack want or is it a higher self want? And again, this is all covered both in Fearless, Loved Up and Limitless and also our Conscious Mind course, Liberation from Limitation. And I'm super excited to say that come the end of September, we're going to be relaunching both programs. This is like a really, really great time for you to get aligned with co-creating your reality, getting clear on what really holds you um, out of the space of grace, what keeps you creating those same old stories again, and whether you're really willing to take a step in the direction of having what you want moving from longing to having so if you consider again this statement around you know I am allowed to have what I want if I came and I said hey magic wand here fairy godmother here what is it you want my your wish is my command what would you say and you know what I find that when people are faced with this very often what happens is we're scared to own what we want in case we discover it's not what we really want it's just what we think we want more often than not, when I see those of my clients who self-sabotage, which is all of us, by the way, because we're more frightened of our success than our failure. And, you know, failure, what does that mean? Aiming for something but not actually achieving it, right? What does success mean? Aiming for something and hitting the mark, achieving it, being able to have a result in the direction of what it is that you've actually wanted. So very often... We seek material wants, we seek material pleasures, believing that they're going to bring us that sense of fulfillment. And we soon realize we buy. Doesn't matter how much money we make, that fulfillment is never going to come from things that are in the material world. Although it is absolutely essential that our basic needs, think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, are covered for us to be able to move beyond the need for shelter, the need for love, the need for food, the need for warmth, right? So what is very important for us to understand in this paradoxical world that we live in is, as I say, it's not either or, it's and this and more. Like what might be not true on one level is true on another level. So everything coexists. Now, what I thought I would do is to go straight into a little reading for us to actually see what is happening with this new moon energy, because this month, we have had so many little power moments. And we've got another one coming up. So we had one just after the Lions Gate. We had one on the 13th of August. And we've got another one coming up the 21st till the 23rd of August, which is when the Sun and Regulus or Regulus um, are in, in an alignment. And this is a three-day portal, which happens to be over the anniversary of mine and my beautiful husband's birth, uh, wedding. And it's also Kate and Chris's wedding anniversary. This is why I'm here in France. Might actually have to do a little, there's the Kate. <laughs> uh, Kate, um, Kate invited us over. We've got a mini festival going on this coming weekend. And then we will be celebrating. We're getting married again, basically. So, you know, I am so grateful to have met my sacred union partner. It certainly didn't happen by accident. I did a lot of preparation work to clear my limiting beliefs around love, around why I kept attracting men who were not committed, men who were not really interested in what I wanted, weren't really on the same vibe. And that journey of going from not having, of lacking, of always attracting Mr. Wrong to then attracting Mr. Right is basically the fearless, loved up and limitless journey. That journey that I went through clearing my subconscious and aligning my subconscious and conscious mind with my superconscious 
took me a while to get fully aligned but what it did was it brought my beautiful sacred union divine counterpart into my life and we're now celebrating our third wedding anniversary and it feels good just to renew our vows every year so we're finding creative ways of doing it and this year we're going to be sharing that with Chris and with the lovely Kate so the bottom line is everything is available to all of us but it doesn't just come our way we have to want it it's like ask desire believe receive so you have to ask for it desire it to get the energy building for it right believe that it is yours believe that you are destined to succeed and as a result of that, receive. Now, that's the formula, but in between those four words are a whole load of work, right? And that work is to, to work with the limiting beliefs that your conscious mind has and the subconscious limiting beliefs that you've inherited from your time in the womb and the first seven years of life. This is not something we just decide we can do and it's done. It's a process we need to go through. As I said, this is exactly what Fearless, Loved Up and Limitless is. So when you do clear the subconscious programs around lack, which may be showing up in your health, they may be showing up in your relationships, they may be showing up in your ability to conceive and have a happy family life. They may be showing up in your ability to experience um, a fulfilling sexual life. This is very important because there's a lot of conditioning and shame around that. May well also be showing up in terms of abundance, relationship to wealth, material wealth, how we feel about having plenty and whether we're living in the not enough, just enough, uh, more than enough or the plenty realm. And I, if you're catching this and you're listening, please do share if you will be open to it, whether you're on YouTube or whether you are in the Facebook group where you sit with that. Are you in the not enough, the just enough? the more than enough or the plenty camp in terms of your material access to all things. Because all of us, when we align with our divine human selves, when we align with our soul self, have access to absolutely everything. But part of the journey of being here in this physical realm is to learn the art of being detached. Okay, so it's owning your desire and at the same time being detached from outcome, knowing that when we say, I want this, but in wanting this, I surrender it to the highest good of all. And I say, give me this or something better. And in that surrender is the total trust. Now, here's the interesting thing I was saying about courage and confidence. Courage does not mean the absence of fear. People expect when they've hit the jackpot, when they're like aligned with something that's cosmically aligned for them, their higher self speaking to them, they're not going to feel fear. Forget that. You are going to feel fear. The moment that you invest in yourself in a way you've never invested in before, you will experience false evidence, false expectation, false emotion appearing real. Why? You're moving out of your comfort zone. Your brain and your mind are going to give you all the reasons why you shouldn't do it, all the reasons why this is a bad thing. And if you, like me, have previously invested in programs or coaches who have promised wonderful things and they haven't ended up delivering, it's even harder to have the courage to go, you know what, even though this didn't work out for me the way I wanted to last time, all the time before that, I know that the difference between failing and succeeding is not giving up. It's learning the art of discernment, learning from previous expect experiences so that we can bring that discernment to the next experience, knowing more about what we're looking for, what we need to see in order to feel more assured that we're going in a direction that is for our highest good. There is no guarantee, but if we're willing to show up fully ourselves to do whatever is required, and that doesn't mean selling your soul, by the way, this means moving through the discomfort of embracing the unfamiliar, of challenging your beliefs, of being willing to practice again and again and again, whatever you need to, which comes from a commitment, yeah, to being resilient and to also having patience in, in your process because the confidence will come as a result of having total trust in the fact that you are betting on yourself. When you decide to bet on yourself and you decide that you are destined to succeed, it is inevitable you're gonna succeed. And anyone who comes into your life, as you ask a question, as you reach for something you want and says, hey, I'm your way to getting it, you get to line up with them and go, all right, let me see, is this really, something that is aligned with my values is this really something that is going to help me to get what I desire or is it something that shines brightly but it's all that glitters is not gold and I think you know what I mean by that you have to go towards something to get really clear you have to meet your fears meet your doubts speak up 
for the reassurance that you need and then see how you are met in this world, okay? So as we said, courage is not the absence of fear. It is the willingness to feel fear and move through it, not let it stop you. So we can say fear means go, not no, all right? Now in the, in the <laughs> description of trust, okay, or of, of, sorry, not trust, I've said it the wrong way now, I've given it away, confidence. Confidence is full trust. Let's say that again. Confidence is full trust. So if you think of the archetype of the Leo energy, it's like, ta-da, here I am. How are you doing? This is what I want. This is where I am. This is what I do. And it's all very, very trumpets, loud trumpets, standing on a stage and shining brightly this light. Got courage and confidence. And that confidence is that total trust in self, that total trust in our ability to find a way through, even if we don't know how. Now, interestingly, in the manifesting world, there's often a big emphasis on the how. How am I going to do it? Which takes us into the brain. I invite you to look at this slightly differently and to go, having a desire is one thing. Asking how you're going to create it is about just putting that out into the ethers. It's not actually about doing your own head in trying to work out how. So in the way that we approach something in our lives that we seek to manifest, co-create, we ask the question, hmm, I wonder how it's going to be possible for me to create this. I wonder how this is going to manifest with grace and ease. And when you ask questions like that, you then get a response from your higher self-consciousness, from the universe, if you like. And you start to get shown the different ways how, the possibilities. And when we choose to align, this is part of the co-creator's part, to put your soul in control and to choose to align with the highest good of all and the win-win-win in everything, you let go of like micromanaging desires. You let go of micromanaging your wants. You actually just get really clear on imagining what it would feel like to have it. And then you ask, what is the next step I need to take to help co-create this? You plant that seed, you get on with your business, and then you'll get the clarity. You'll get the phone call. You'll, you'll read something. The, the message will become clear to you from the world around you. It's learning how to read those messages that's so important. And learning how to read those messages is exactly what our course Liberation from Limitation is about. So, you know, I do want to say a little bit more about these courses because I, I don't think my community, those of you who haven't yet joined the coaching programs, are fully aware of what these programs are really about. Right? They're very much about how we co-create the new world by becoming aware of what we don't want from the old world and using our imagination to create something new in the new world. And this is similar to making the Monday magical, like looking beyond the day to day, like the way that we've been desensitized and programmed just to see things a certain way and finding our way to see things differently. So we start to really engage with our environment, with, with our inner self and our outer environment. And we learn how to make the brain and the mind work for us rather than against us. And also in servitude to the heart, because it's through our heart center that we access the eternal aspect of our being, our soul self. So anyone who's an overthinker, anyone who's a control freak, anyone who identifies with being a giver rather than a taker, anyone who knows that you suffer for the world, you're, you know, might be neurodivergent, you may well find yourself self-medicating because you feel so sensitive to everything around you, you want to help save the world, help make the world a better place, and yet your focus is outward rather than inward. This is exactly why Rosie Glow as a community provides the courses that we do to help you access your power, your magnetism, your, I call it your pulling power, which is in your solar plexus. But it's the, the energy that radiates out a frequency that then attracts to you what you want or what you don't want. And most of us are very good at attracting to us what we don't want rather than what we do. So between working with the conscious mind, which is liberation and working with the subconscious mind, which is fearless, loved up and limitless, you get to harness these energies to work for you in alignment with your soul self, in alignment with your superconscious. So wherever you have struggled, wherever you have had a block in your life, you are able then to experience the joy of receiving what up until now you've been grasping for. Some things much easier than others to co-create. And I have to say that for me to shift my conditioning, it took me four years is to go from the version of me that kept attracting the old stuff to ka-ching, 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 everything that I had wanted to create 
starting to manifest. Now, of course, I saw signs of things beforehand. I had a lot of fun along the way. But to get to the place where I could actually settle and say, this is the road I want to continue on, that was four years. And that was when my beautiful husband and I got together and that started our adventure. And honestly, it's available to everyone, but you just have to be persistent and patient with your process. Now, I'm going to check to see if anyone has any questions. Let me know. And I'm going to move into this little reading now so that we can actually um, make the most of these energies and prep for the next full moon. Let me just see what is going on in the Facebook group. Now, anyone who's on YouTube, thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. Everything that you share really helps me to know what to create for you next. And I've been doing this work for a long time. Hello, Jen. So, you know, it's really, really lovely to receive your messaging. And as a result of that, to then be able to respond to you and to give you something that's going to help you get a next step from where you are and see how you can actually get from where you are to where you want to be. Because it's all about not giving up. It's all about knowing when to forge forward and when to take a step back. Another thing I'm super excited to announce is that very, very soon, so within the next week, you will notice that the gift on my Rosy Glow website is going to change from the Divine Legacy upgrade to the Rainbow Gems. Now, the Rainbow Gems are soul guidance, daily soul guidance. They're really simple little statements. You're going to have a PDF that you can print up on card and then chop all of the different um, statements up, put little Rainbow Gems up, put them in a bowl. And then every day, anytime you're like, what's going on? I don't know what's happening here. You get to pick the messages, the guidance that just helps you to realign with your soul consciousness. This is all part of the Fearless program. And honestly, I wanted everyone to have this because it's so simple to get back into alignment. Sometimes you need to just step back, let go and trust. Other times you need to push through and it's knowing when you need to do either, right? Also, there's a lot of statements that have come up through the years. Like the first time I ran Fearless was... 2015 so we're good eight years in right there's a lot of statements that have come up again and again and again from us working together with all the different coaching clients I've had and it's the reiteration of this mindset this world view this seeing through eyes of love so you love what you see that allows you to optimally align with everything that you truly want when you line up with it you hold that frequency and you keep clearing the resistance as it shows up this then allows that tsunami of change and whatever level you want to reach, you reach. There's a four page, a four page list of wants I had in regard to my beautiful partner manifesting in my life. So it did take a while, I could say a page a year, but oh my, did I get what I wanted and then some, like seriously exceeded my expectations. Same with my financial goals. Then when Star Peace came about, you know, this is the biggest dream I've ever had. This is about how we co-create peace on earth. I truly believe I have the codes for that. And I'm not delusional. I know it's about working with the systems that are basically in our natural environment here on this earth. And I was given star maps from my guides, the Star Peace Collective, that help us to access what we need in terms of the structures, working with our logical mind so that we can actually access our soul consciousness. There is a book coming out very soon about all of that called the Star Peace Star Maps. But essentially, this was like me going for absolute platinum gold. It was not like playing small. This was, hey, if I played my biggest game, what would happen? And this, again, has taken me a good couple of years to really prepare and to let go of all my fears and reservations around stepping into this version of me, the version of me that doesn't hold back, that knows that she has the authenticity and the authority to step forward and speak to those who have the most influence and power and support them to become soul guided rather than ego guided. And as a result of that, create, create change on an unprecedented scale on this earth. Yes, I am owning that. OK, that's my dream, my vision now. And your vision may or may not be that big. It might actually be to feel fulfilled in life and to enjoy everything that you have. Whatever you have a dream for, whatever it is you have a longing for, you get to align with it and experience it. OK, there's no one out there that is to tell you whether you're right or wrong and what you desire. But in you questioning yourself, why do I want what I want? I am allowed to have what I want, but why do I want it? 
then you get the clarity of where your wants are coming from, where your desires are coming from. There's nothing wrong with desire, except all the indoctrination and conditioning we've had around desire being a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with wanting, except all the conditioning around being told that wanting is a bad thing. So as I said, join me for the full moon in Pisces, co-creation meditation, the manifesting meditation, which will be on the 29th. I'm going to host it on Tuesday, the 29th of August at 1 p.m. in the Star Peace Facebook group. And this is where we're going to do the clearing around shame. And we're going to allow ourselves to release the reservations we have to actually having what we want, to owning what we want, to speak up for what we want in this world, in our personal lives, in every area of our life. Wonderful to witness. Ah, good to see you. Good to see you all. Welcome, welcome. So let's now see what the cards have to say. And um, let's make the most of it because six planets are going to be retrograde this month. The two most powerful ones are Mercury and Venus. Mercury hasn't gone retrograde just yet, but it will be. Venus is in retrograde presently. So you may well find that you've been quite frustrated, patients been running thin, feeling sluggish. I mean, all of these things are quite standard when we have got all these planets in retrograde, but there is a blessing in disguise here. You know, when all planets are retrograde like this, we're getting this opportunity to refine what we want, okay, until we get really clear. And you know what? I'm not going to tell you how many times I've gone, I don't, I don't even know what I want. I have these big goals, but like my husband asked me, what do I want for my birthday this year? I was like, don't, I don't need anything. What do I want? Other than seeing star peace get seeded, other than, you know, allowing myself to reach more people with this message, what else do I want for my beautiful, joyful fulfillment to continue? Yeah, to experience more pleasure in the day-to-day -day things that it's easy to take for granted. It, it's, it becomes so much less about big, big material shifts, right? And much more about that inner refinement of energy. So again, give yourself permission to question what it is. In the end, I asked for a butterfly farm. So I've got some um, caterpillars at home that are becoming butterflies because I very much felt like I'd been in a cocoon myself. Now, no worries, darling. It might actually be my internet connection as well. It's going back and forth. Let's just see what our cards are saying. So for this new moon in Leo, what do we actually need to know, align with, become aware of in order to allow ourselves to embrace what we want, to have what we want, to align with what we want? What is coming up for us here? Let us see. And anyone who is here, please do say hello. I'd love to know. Okay, so the heart of the matter. I even dreamt of this card last night. I'm not going to lie. This was the second card that showed up. There was a I saw a reading in my in my dream state last night. This was the second card that came up. I can't remember what the first one was. This is about heartache. Okay, this is about the tears that are born of sadness, of unrequited love, of of being hopeful and then our hopes being dashed, of grief. Yeah, unprocessed grief. And for most of us in this current generation, wherever you are, however old you are. We are dealing with the unprocessed grief and trauma of many generations before. So we're holding this for those that can't express it for themselves. So anyone who finds themselves as sensitive in this world, anyone who finds themselves wanting to help others, feeling um, in some way like self-medicating is a part of your reality because you feel too sensitive to the world, this will be because you have a whole load of stuff inside of you that isn't yours. It's be in your energy field, in your cellular memory, but it is your job to clear it. So star seed, awaken. Your job as a star seed is to reconnect to your soul consciousness. So this particular card, in terms of us being allowed to have what we want, is to meet all of the memories, all of the beliefs, all of the programming we've had that tells us we're not allowed to have what we want, that we're bad to want what we want, that we can't have it, and that we've had our hopes dashed. So, you know, when you thought something was happening and then it didn't, it's all of those moments. Again, please remember that the individual and the collective are both equally important, right? The, the collective ocean of love is made of individual droplets of love, right? So we don't have one without the other. 
and we're learning in unified consciousness to embrace all that is. It's the unity in diversity, if you like. So, hey, Danny. Yeah, it's a powerful one, isn't it? It keeps showing up. Lovely to see you. So the block to us clearing this heartache, to clearing this longing and not having. What is the block we want to clear? This was the other card that was in my dream. I think this was the third or the fourth card. This is the third card that showed up in my dream last night. I'm not going to lie. That's insane. I, mean, I love how these things happen, right? So this is our desire fire. In order for us to let go of all of that heartache and all of that, I'm just going to call it unrequited love, but it's really the unmet wants and needs, the times when we were disappointed. We have to reconnect what it is we desire. What do I have a longing for? What do I feel would thrill me? What do I want to experience? Never mind whether I told whether it's good or bad. So let's look at this in the realm of relationships. One of the byproducts of all of my coaching work is sacred union. It is that those who've wanted a relationship get into a relationship that is a match for them, their divine counterpart, sacred union. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean a monogamous relationship. You know, I've had clients that have gone through journeys where they've gone into polyamory. I've had other clients go into uh, relationships where they've had open relationships. Other um, clients who've gone into connections with plenty of others, like conscious union with others as part of their, um, their union themselves. There's no judgment here. Okay, we might have been indoctrinated through religious conditioning to say this is good and that is bad, but there was a reason for that. It's important for you to own what you want for yourself without apology, without wor worrying about whether it's right or wrong, just owning what you want to experience. So this is key to being able to clear the hardship, the heartache, of everything that's happened before. And the here and now, so the card that is allowing us to metabolize or metamorphosize, if you like, the moving from the, oh, I'm not gonna get what I want anyway, so I might as well not actually try and not own it, not even strive towards it. It happens to other people, it doesn't happen to me. So then owning, well, actually, I'd like to have this experience. I believe this is what I want most next. The key to us doing that metamorphosis is the dream weaver. So this is when we dream a new reality into being. Now, to me, this is our inner magic woman, okay? Our inner magic man looks like Merlin. But our inner magic woman, she gets into the feeling state of already having it. So where is this one here? I'm getting goosebumps as I say this. This one's about owning what you desire. This one is about them feeling as though you already have it. Now that you've got what you want, where does that take you next? Because as you see in this card, there's a bridge, right? And for us to get from the place of wanting and longing to the place of having, we have to create this bridge. And the way that we do it is imagine we're on the other side of that bridge so we can then see what potential issues we fear we're going to encounter once we have what we want. Because to, to have something you've longed for means you have to go through a process where you're willing to let go of old issues and challenges and know that you will experience new issues and challenges in a new realm. Everywhere, everywhere you end up has different things to encounter. Think, when you move house, you knew the issues with your old house, right? How to work with the personality of your old house. You move to a new house and you've got different issues. Maybe you've got damp, maybe you've got a leaky roof, maybe you've got a boiler that has an interesting temperament, right? So you encounter new things. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means that everywhere you move to from where you've moved from has something new for you to encounter. And that's why fear plays such a big part because fear shows up when we're moving beyond the familiar. And, you know, as I said, I think it's very important when you've had experiences where you have dared to make a change and it hasn't worked out the way you wanted it to, very important to notice the, the language you use, the story you tell yourself. You know, is it that you didn't get what you want or is it that you didn't get what you expected? How has that prepared you for the next step? Because nothing is wasted. When you look back, you can connect the dots. It all makes sense. Hindsight's a great teacher. But you can't really do that as you move forward. When you take a step back, a step back and step up, you get to experience the bird's eye view which allows you to see the wholeness of everything from a different perspective right you get to see how everything's connected and why it's valuable to then move through whatever you're moving through whether it's comfortable or not 
Okay, so we're resolving the infinite possibilities in this little reading of ours. <laughs> Was it really? Oh, we're having the same readings, me and Danny. That's crazy. Okay, so the resolve and the infinite possibilities, of course. This, if you like, is in many ways the, the Lionsgate card. Very often I've got two decks of this, this set, and this set is Leslie Sloan's Oracle Healing Cards. Okay, they're amazing. You can buy them from my website, rosyglow.com, if you go to the store. I absolutely love them. What you don't ever get to see is the mandalas on the back, and she shows you in the book how to work with eye gazing into these mandalas and therefore being able to draw from your cellular memory and your energetic imprint, anything relating to this image, this particular card that will allow you to have a cosmic shift. So this is like your higher self, eternal soul self, the figure of eight that runs through the heart, reminds us that the eternal flow of all good things is available to every one of us. That as we tap into the eternal flow, which is infinite grace as I see it, we get to experience the fulfillment of our longings and our desires. So again, let's recap. The key is releasing the heartache, the heartbreak of the past, of what we've lived through that has left its mark, that has made us more cautious about stepping into uncharted territory. Every one of us is born with conditioning, limiting conditioning, call it ego conditioning or limited mindset conditioning. We inherit the stories of our ancestors. You know, it's fine to have got a, me a message from seven generations ago. Oh, don't, you know, never go near anything yellow because it might sting you like a bee. But actually it's out of context. And what was relevant seven generations ago isn't relevant now. There's a slow time lag of processing, right? So most of us are seeing the world through the eyes of our ancestors and living out stories that are not ours. They're our ancestors' stories. Until we choose to put our soul in control and we decide to live from our soul self, our higher self, we'll keep repeating the stories of our ancestors, wondering why this keeps happening to me, when actually it's your vibration that keeps creating it because it's in your imprint. So letting go of that story is the key, right? That's the theme of I'm allowed to have what I want. And that means you have to get in touch with your desires and then get into the feeling state of already have had your desires met. This then allows you to open to the eternal flow of receiving, knowing that as opportunities come towards you, as experiences come towards you, you get to practice discernment in terms of whether you will say yes or no to that experience. And I know how frustrated I used to get when I go out in the garden every day and I call in my divine counterpart ascension partner. So I'm, I am calling in my um, sacred union divine counterpart ascension partner. I used to say it every day. I am my divine human self. I am my divine feminine self, my divine masculine self, all the I am's that I work with. And then I go about my business and, you know, the next time I'm out and about some some hot stud would come towards me and you know say all the right words but really he was only interested in one thing and it's just like no that's not what I want you don't have to go oh I've put this call out this guy must be it or this girl or this they however it works for you right what you get to do is pull towards you and go this isn't in resonance off you go you might have heard of cosmic ordering something that I remember um what was his name now one of the astrologers who's since passed on, he wrote a book called Cosmic Ordering. It was a big thing about 20 years ago. It's like when you put your wants out into the universe. Now, if you receive something that isn't what you want, you send it back, you say, no, no, it's not this. In fact, the best example I'd have about that now is um, ChatGPT or any of the AI technology available. You have to know how to put the right prompts in, right, to get the right information out. If you put the right prompts in, you will get great feedback out. But if you don't, you're going to get stuff that is rubbish. Now, if you don't know better, you'll go, well, this is rubbish. It's useless. The whole thing, throw it away. No, it's just the way you are interacting with it that isn't getting the results that you want. So you learn to refine your search. You learn to get better at your prompts. You learn to get clearer in your energetic vibration. And that's why every obstacle is truly for the highest good. Everything that comes about that isn't what you want is coming about to align you with what you do really want. There was a time that I truly felt that I was living a life of resistant band training. Okay, it was like, 
It's like, whoa, we've got one challenge after another, one challenge after another, one challenge after another. But I knew it was just building up the muscle in my wingspan so that when those resistant bands went ping, I could fly at a whole new altitude I'd never flew at before and know I have the strength to maintain it. So again, I hope as I'm saying this, it allows you to reframe the challenges and the struggles in your life because whether you fail or succeed is very much down to your mindset. It's whether you decide to give up and trust me, I do think about it. And, you know, more often than not, we'll think about giving up just before the biggest breakthrough. Some of our wants and needs require a lot of training, a lot of preparation. And if you're going for gold, gold medal, you don't just get there like that, do you? There's a lot of commitment to the training, to showing up no matter what. If you're going to run a marathon, you don't get to just show up and run it and expect to get through the whole thing. You have to prepare for it, train for it. It's physical training, it's emotional training, it's psychological training, and it's spiritual training. Same thing with co-creating reality. So with that in mind, unless anyone has any questions for me, I'm going to bring this to a close. What I invite you to do, beloved ones, is to really consider this relationship we're wanting. We're stepping forward. If you weren't scared, okay, if you were actually um, guaranteed success, right? What would you want to do? What is it that you want to step towards? What is it that you're like, that would be so cool if you're willing to do the work for that? What is it? Tell me. I want to know. Comment, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, dare to share, all right? If it feels too much to share in a public arena, then you can DM me, right? You can find Rosie Glow on Instagram. You can find Rosie Glow on YouTube. Uh, you can find, you can join my mailing list. That's probably the easiest thing you could do. So go to rosyglow.com and through rosyglow.com, join my mailing list. Then you can send me an email directly. I want to know what's going on for you. I want to know how I can help you to achieve what you want. We're not living in a world anymore where there are those of us who give to others in a way that it's like, I'm the healer, I'm going to heal you. What we do is we teach others how to be their own healer. We pass on what we have learned. Look, this has worked for me. This has been consistent. It keeps bringing results. I'll show you how to do it. Yes, there's a price tag. Pay it. And then the reward will be that you can keep creating for yourself again and again and again. So it's the difference between giving a human being a fish and teaching them to fish or whatever analogy you want to use. Okay. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please do mark your diaries for the 29th of August, 1 p.m. BST. I'll be in the Facebook group, Manifesting Star Peace Utopia, which you can join. If you haven't joined it already, I'll put the link in the text box for YouTube and anywhere else that we actually share this. It's a free private space that you can come and be part of my manifesting community. Where we're co-creating a new world paradigm through raising our own vibration. And for those of you who are like, damn, I actually do want to make a really big change in my life. And I do believe that this lady is speaking in alignment with my values and I'm going to give you a link now to a desire mapping pool because this is where we get to work out according to your wants needs and budget what the logical next step is for you to be able to take so what does that mean it's a free 15 minute conversation with me for those of you who are serious about investing in yourselves okay and are not there just to be heard and moan and whinge because we don't do that but actually are allowing yourselves to step forward and say, hey, can you help me with this? How would it work? How do, what do I need to do to align with this? And this is where I'm at in my life. This is what I can step forward and um, connect with. This is the investment I'm able to make. Where can you meet me? And then I can let you know what's going to be most available for you, your next best step, which will lead you to the next step after that. If you go to my Instagram and Linktree, you will see Desire Mapping Forth. I will also put it in the text box of the relevant places that I leave this video. And if you know you'd like a, a sort of deeper dive than a 15 minute call and you're willing to put some money down to actually have a one-to-one -one with me, I have the Starseed Activation Call for £228 and I have the Divine Destiny Call for £555. The difference between the two is that the second one, the Divine Destiny one, has a bespoke co-creation meditation that I will do with you once we've gone through all the information that we gather from the starseed activation call. So you get the starseed activation call plus this deep dive, which is a personal co-creation for you to align your frequency with what you truly want and to hear the guidance of your soul. So this is when I will channel your soul guidance through a reading 
through the co-creation. Whereas the starseed activation call is really when we look at where you are, where you want to be, what's in the way and what you're going to need to do to get from where you are to where you want to be. What are the next logical steps you need to take so you have a pathway? It's so powerful when you need a belief breakthrough to have someone to reflect back to you where your blind spots are. So it's like an instant win um, reading. Yeah, it's an instant win moment to actually share with me where I can kind of give you a sense of what we do that's long lasting in our courses so this is all available to you all on Linktree I invite you to make an investment in yourself dip your toes in have a sense of what's possible because nothing I've got came for me just wanting it I had to line up wanting it I had to work with those coaches and mentors that had what I wanted that I felt could help me access what I, I felt I lacked and you know the beautiful thing when you're dealing with someone with integrity, with heart, is that you will get what you want. The important thing is to meet your doubts and reservations, your fears, to speak up what they are, to bring them to the table, not to suppress them, so that then you can get a sense of how me or anyone else you would approach would support you with those challenges and help you reframe them, see them differently, so you can see the value in moving beyond the discomfort of, of, of embracing change, right? you want isn't where you are now it's on the other side and it's seeing who you're going to work with to help you get it i love you lots you are amazing thank you so so much for being with me today i will see you on the 29th and in the meantime do join the facebook group or subscribe to youtube if you haven't already let me know how you found this reading let me know how you found this whole experience i'm sending you so much love to win very 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 powerful moments of change that's it for now take care